Hello there, Bradley from BRAD TV here, and I'm fighting through heartbreak and fighting off depression. Now, I'm not a doctor. If you've got serious mental health issues, you think you've got depression, you're not dealing with things well, seek professional medical help, talk to your friends, talk to your family. This is just going to be about my experiences and sharing that with you to show you're not alone and to see that if it can help you in any way or to if you know somebody who's going through this and you don't understand it, it might give you an idea of what's going on with them. It's been a month now since my breakup, uh, since it was ended and this last week I have to be honest and say it's been the toughest and the worst week yet by a long shot, by miles. I don't even hear my voice is starting to go a little bit. Just talking and letting my emotions out, I think. And the reason I think now, a month later, this last week has been the toughest, I think I was in denial. I think that I was had a bit of a shock initially and I was really upset and I knew it was over and I had to move out, so I knew it was over. But subconsciously, somewhere in the back of my brain, there must have been some sort of hope, and I was in denial. And this last week, it's really started to sink in that it's over, and I have to let go and move on. I thought I'd done really well uploading those few YouTube videos I've done since it happened. I thought, yeah, I was quite composed, and I really got across what I wanted to, and I was really happy with myself. The, the darkness hadn't hit hard at that point. So this last week I think it's been the toughest because I had my 10 days off work and this week I've been back at work and it's just like life carries on as normal. Life is just carrying on. And there I am knowing that I have to let go which is sort of counterintuitive when you have feelings and emotions but you've got to be so strong and do it. But say so your brain, you just can't trust it. You're going to hear a door go and think, oh, are they going to walk through? A car will go by and think, is it them? You might see a jacket that looks like they might have or a haircut or something like that. And your brain is going to be torturing you and trying to trip you up. It's horrible. I don't want to think about this. I want to think about other things that aren't going to make me upset. Why, why would your brain do this to you? Why would it show you that? But it will. And all of that's going to be painful, but you've got to fight those thoughts off. And it really is fighting them off because your brain is going to try and show that to you. It's like this little love drug and it wants to expose you to it. Think of all the nice things and things like that. But all that's going to do is torture you and not help you move on. But then I thought, don't describe it as a drug. Describe it as a poison. And it is going to set you back, it's going to upset you, and it's going to drag you down if you let it. If you dwell on those thoughts and sink into that, it will stop you thinking clearly about moving forward, getting on with your life, and finding your own strong individual personality and getting your passion and your joy back if you're too busy torturing yourself. But say you're not torturing yourself, it's your brain doing it. So it's really hard but you've got to fight that off. But it can happen consciously as well. It can get to the point where it's bizarre. You would force it on yourself. Thankfully, I'm not doing that too much. I don't think it's more subconsciously it's happening beyond my control. But you can sit there and you'll think, oh, it was perfect. Now it's ruined. Now it's over. So what's the point? And that is the dangerous territory, that is is when you get those thoughts that it was so perfect, I had everything, my life was great, and now it's over, and that's the end of it. And then you start thinking about more than just the relationship and the heartbreak. You say, oh, I'm feeling alone, I'm in a strange place, I've got no direction, no path, my whole perfect future I had mapped out was just vanished. Am I worthy of love? What did I do wrong? Oh, there's no hope, I'm never gonna meet anyone. When the heartbreak leads to those thoughts, that's the danger zone. That's where things can go seriously wrong in life and where, say, it did for me in the past. At the moment, no, that's good. That is a depression territory. And I don't want to throw that word around, but I can talk about myself in the past. And I had a debilitating depression caused initially by a breakup. I'm not there right now, but 
I'm not B Rad TV either. I'm not running around dressed up as a Ghostbuster or an elf. I'm not amazed by life. Certain depressive traits have reared their ugly head um, and it's unnerving. It's like it's knocking on the door, but I'm not going to let it in. I promise you, I'm not going to let it in. So I'm not in a debilitating depression. I've been to work. And this week, even though it's been the toughest week, I've even managed to go to the gym after work. Seriously depressed, Bradley would not have been able to do that at all. So yeah, get up at half four in the morning, work, get home, eat a bit, wait, work out, eat, wash, cook food for the next day, sleep, rinse, repeat all week. That's amazing. Hooray, you're not up unhappy. What are you on about, you idiot? Why are you saying you're unhappy if you're doing all that? Let me talk about the reality of my week. The reality of a week pushing through heartbreak, wanting to let go, and fighting off depression. My emotions this week have been like a pendulum, going from numbness, where I just don't care about anything, to pain, crippling mental anguish, hopelessness, pain, curled up in bed. It's been one of those two things. And all I knew, all I could think was that I didn't want to feel the pain. I didn't want the pain. I don't want that. I don't want it to become more frequent. And I don't want it to get more intense. So that meant just numbness and not caring. I just thought, if I just don't care, it just doesn't matter. I'll just go to work, I'll, I'll do my work, if then I can get home and I can go to the gym, and I didn't care about it. If you've seen my videos on here, I go into the gym singing. I, I know, like, some part of me loves it. I have loved it. I will love it again in the future. Uh, but this week, I just haven't cared. But it stopped me being in that pain zone. And I haven't been in, and I haven't spiralled to climb, being trapped in with negative thoughts just feeding back on each other and dragging me down. It's like right now I'm doing this video, I'm talking, I'm not getting worse because I'm thinking about recovery. So I guess I do care that I want to recover. But I don't want to do anything. There's no programs I want to watch, there's no food I want to eat, I don't want to go to the gym, I don't even care about this Ramstein gig, I don't care about this motorbike thing, I just, I just, I just don't care. And that's, I haven't felt like that since I've done B-Rad TV. Even with then the not caring, I haven't wanted to feel the pain. So if I can distract myself from that with anything, work, a half assed workout, I did that. And I have to sort of feel pleased about that. And food wise, my appetite before this week, I thought it was coming back. No, the appetite is completely gone. It's like a sickness, your stomach crawling up through your throat. You don't know if you're going to be sick, and then even when you eat, you think you're going to be sick. But I've forced myself to eat. Um, at the beginning of the week, I couldn't eat full meals. Now I am eating full meals. Just chew, 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 water, water, water. And the, and the funny thing is, there was no food, so I don't care. Like, even though I think I might like burgers and pizza, there's nothing I wanted to eat. Nothing I could look forward to. Nothing I could eat that's going to make me feel better. So I thought I might as well just eat plain fuel. It's cheaper for me, I know that, so I'll save money. And it'll be better for my body, so my mind can at least be in a healthy body. And that'll help promote recovery if I'm physically feeling good. I'm not going to enjoy my food. I might as well eat the plainest, cleanest, cheapest stuff possible. And I've done that. So with that insight into how I'm thinking and fueling my body, the actual structure of the day, how does that work? I would wake up, numb, not caring, just autopilot, get to work. Work, my brain would be occupied, so that was great. Like, work is so mad, it was actually great because I could just occupy my brain. Then when work would finish, it would hit, the pain would hit, I'd have to power walk out, round a corner, sat down, cried, just hit me, like all the emotion that I'd managed to numb off and, I don't know, pull it out of the bag and work. Afterwards, it just hit me. And I mean, a couple of days, head in hands, seriously broken. 
me, grown man, all the stuff I've done on my YouTube, everything, just too much emotion just has to come out. I then get home, uh, walk, bus, teary-eyed sometimes, sometimes full-on crying. And then I'd get home and I'd phone the Samaritans every day. Just a helpline, don't know if you have them across the world, anything like that. In the UK, it's an anonymous helpline, you phone, speak to a complete stranger, and they'll hear you out and talk to you. Um, and it's a really good way to talk about your feelings, talk about your emotions, talk through things, talk about life, just get things off your chest. Normally, the phone calls this week have been lasting about an hour, and then after that phone call, dry, throat drained, just exhausted, just totally just done after being so numb and pain and crying and talking about it all again, just done. But then I sat there and I thought, I can't be in, I couldn't sit in the house. I had to get out with half a day to fill. All I was gonna feel if I was inside with my thoughts would be hopelessness and it would just spiral down. And I had pre-workout supplement, caffeine to try and perk me up and I got to the gym at half speed, lightweight because I hadn't been eating properly. I couldn't even listen to my normal gym playlist, my Rockin' Ramstein, which I have listened to actually, I think, when I went away and forced myself to work out after the breakup, but this week something's gone wrong and it just didn't feel right. I was in there and I just couldn't. One day I managed to listen to a Ramstein song and that felt like the biggest victory all week, being able to listen to a Ramstein song in the gym. And then I'd finished my workout and the emotion had hit me again. The pain would hit me again in the shower, getting changed, and then one day, the worst, I, had, I walked outside the gym, got around the corner, sat on a bench, head in hands, crying again. Just cried it out, cried it out. Um, and then my brain was going over what I'd done, and I, I sat there, and I thought to myself, hang on a minute, Bradley, you got up at four o'clock this morning, and you went to work and you worked all day, and then you got home, then you talked through your feelings a bit, and then you got to the gym and you had a workout, all you gotta do now is go home and eat something. So I've been through all of that today, in that one day, I'm not just gonna curl up in a ball on this bench, I'm gonna go home. And thinking that to myself made me get up and I put one foot in front of the other, got home, made food for that night and made food for the next day. I say I didn't enjoy it, I wasn't excited, I wasn't thinking I'm doing this and I'm going to get all cut up and great. I'm just doing it to occupy my brain. It's essentially being present and meditating in activity, doing something. Even if you're not getting love and enjoyment from it and passion at the moment, at least you're distracted and you're present and you're not dwelling and spiralling down. And then at the very end of the week, the last phone call I had to the Samaritans I talked about everything I've just shared with you, the numbness, the, the pendulum, the pain, loss of appetite, so just forcing food down me, going to the gym or working, crying, phoning the Samaritans, speaking to friends and family. And then after I'd explained all of that, I said to them almost sarcastically, I said, yeah, that's how I've got through this week. And they just stopped and picked up on that and said, yes, that is how you got through this week. Oh, what a, what a perfect response. That is how you got through this week. And that just really stuck with me. And that's actually what inspired me to do this video, to just share this with you. And as well as the feelings, we talked about what I actually did in the day and what I do the next day, which is looking forward. I've done that, I'm going to do that. And in amongst that, there's no giving up, there's no sort of stopping. It might be numbness, like I'm not excited to go to the gym tomorrow, but I'm going to go because it's something to do and it will stop me feeling pain. I might even try and film a vlog of being away. And I know that I'm filming a recovery journey. And I know that I might cry, I might phone the Samaritans when I get back home, but then I'll do that. And then I'll go to work and then I'll go to the gym. I will stay busy and I will fight through this. And that is how I am fighting through heartbreak and fighting off depression. 
I hope that has shown you something, the reality of getting through heartbreaking times and fighting off depression for you or somebody else. I really don't just want to make whiny videos for the sake of it, self-indulgent misery. I really hope that what I've said here when I come to edit this together and put it out there, that you can see that I've wanted to show you all the reality of what it is like living like this, and dealing with this stuff. But then that is it. That is dealing with it. And that is getting through it. So if you're out there going through anything like this, you can fight off depression, spiraling negative thoughts, and degenerating into, well, a worse situation mentally. Occupy your mind. Even say me, I'm a zested up, happy person. You watch my stuff, and it's just gone for now. But I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep doing videos. And I'm going to keep going to the gym. And in time, I want to get back to my old self. That's all we can do. Reclaim our strong individual personalities. Get on with life. This sort of video is the real battle, the real challenge in life. Like I could do all the heavy weights and show you the gym and stuff, but that's fine. That's easy. It's when it's up here and in here, that is a true test of character. I'm pushing through it. I'm showing you it can be done. You're not alone. Be there. For people if you know they're going through anything like this hopefully this can explain it to you I've got friends that don't understand this at all I've got friends that do but it's like trying to explain science to a duck if you don't understand it hopefully this gives you some sort of inclination thank you for listening thank you for all the support people have been putting in and sharing your stories as well that's one of the reasons I want to keep doing these videos and talking about this sort of subject and getting through it because some of the stories people are sharing with me are unbelievable. This is so much bigger than me and just a breakup. This is across the world. This is, well, heartbreak and mental health and depression, all of that. It's massive. And if I can share my experiences and some good can come out of my pain, then I guess I should feel good about that even though I can't right now, but I know I will be able to in the future. Right, no more rambling. I am really going to try and do a vlog tomorrow. Go back to what I know. And again, I'm not buzzing for it, but I, it'll occupy my time. I'm away here now. Family aren't here, friends aren't here, can't phone the Samaritans. This is a true test. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Take care. You're still here. Don't give up. You're still here. Don't give up. Take good care of yourselves. And be rad.